Hey guys, so today we're going to be going over estimations, specifically confidence intervals and point estimates. So to start us off, when we try to estimate population parameters, we sometimes use confidence intervals to give us a ballpark of where our parameter is. And to construct a confidence interval, we use two different parts. First part is the statistic, which is an estimate of a population parameter based on sample data. Second part is your margin of error, which is an estimate of how far off a statistic is from the parameter. The way we calculate margin of error is critical value times standard deviation of a statistic. Standard deviation of the statistic, there are formulas for that in the green sheet, don't worry about it. Critical value, if you don't know how to calculate it, we're going to go over that in this video. And note that margin of error increases as confidence interval percent increases, because when you have a higher percent confidence interval, you basically use a greater range of values, hence you're going to have a larger margin of error. A point estimator is a statistic that provides an estimate of a population parameter. A point estimate is the value of that statistic from a sample. A point estimator has two properties, bias and variability. A point estimator can be either bias or unbiased. A point estimator has varying degrees of variability. An ideal point estimator has no bias and low variability. Examples of unbiased estimators that we will be using for confidence intervals are the sample mean and the sample proportion. A confidence interval gives an interval of plausible values for a parameter. The formula for a confidence interval is a point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. In the picture to the left, these 25 samples of the same size from the same population gave these 95% confidence intervals. In the, in the long run, about 95% of the samples give an interval that captures the true population mean. If the sample size increases, the confidence interval decreases. For a confidence interval for a proportion, check if there is a random sample or random assignment and if the 10% condition and large counts condition are met. For a confidence interval for a mean, check if there is also a random sample or random assignment and if the 10% condition is met and if it is a large or normal sample. The confidence level gives the overall success rate of the method for calculating the confidence interval. To interpret confidence intervals, we use this sentence structure. We are blank percent confident that the interval from blank to blank captures the blank. An example of this would be, we are 95% confident that the interval from 245.98 to 265.98 captures the mean number of texts sent every school day. To interpret confidence levels, we use this sentence structure. If we take many samples of blank, about blank percent of them will result in an interval that captures the blank. An example of this would be, if we take many samples of 2,253 U.S. adults, about 95% of them will result in an interval that captures the true proportion of all U.S. adults who use Twitter or another service for updates. Okay, so when you're trying to determine critical values for a z-interval, two ways you can do it. First way is you use the values at the bottom of the table for t-scores for the confidence interval. So say for example, you have a 90% confidence interval. You look at the number directly above your 90% here on the t-table, and that's 1.645. 1.645 is your critical value. Don't worry about degrees of freedom for a z-interval because z-intervals do not use degrees of freedom. Other way you could do it is just use the inverse norm function on a graphing calculator. Z-confidence interval, you're gonna hit second, distribution, inverse norm. Area is the same as one minus your percent confidence interval divided by two. So in the case of a 90% confidence interval, one minus 0.9 divided by two is 0 0.05. Mean is zero, standard deviation is one. Don't touch that, otherwise you'll get a weird value. Hit paste, enter, flip the sign, and that's your answer. T interval, there's a three-step process you'd use for the green sheet. First step is you determine what percent confidence interval is being carried out. Read the question for that. Step two, determine degrees of freedom. This is basically sample size minus one for a T interval. And then you find the critical value using those two values that you just found. So say, for example, you have a 90% confidence interval, but you have 25 degrees of freedom. So you look at the 90% column and you go up to 25. That means your critical value is going to be 1.708. Other way you could do this is use the inverse t function on your graphing calculator. Critical value, you're going to hit second distribution, inverse t. Say so you're doing a 10% confidence interval with 25 degrees of freedom. Your area value is going to be the same as before. Degrees of freedom is 25. Hit paste. Flip the sign and that's your critical value. You can use the margin of error formula to solve for a sample size of size n. When estimating with a population mean, use the formula right here. 
plug in a reasonable value for the population standard deviation, and find the z-star critical value from a standard normal curve for the specified confidence level before solving the inequality for n. When estimating with a population proportion, use this formula and plug in a guess value for the sample proportion for p hat. A reasonable value to use is p hat is equal to 0 0.5. For extra help with these types of questions, check out Frappy number 6 from the 2012 AP exam. Thank you for watching.